Spanish recording is underway. Then for anybody that is new to to the group and have not received my my WhatsApp detail, it is on the screen, but I am quickly going to share the link with you as well. Um, so that you can you can maybe just click on the link. Um, so let me quickly share that with you guys. So if the link is not working, um, please send me just a WhatsApp on zero eight three seven nine zero eight three eight seven. Um, but here is yes the link to the to a WhatsApp group. Okay. Okay, great. So, so to tonight we're basically going to look at at compound interest, um, but before we get there, also to the guys that might not yet be um, linked to the. To the Cape Town portal. Let me just. So if you if you have not or cannot access the Western Cape portal of of UNISA, um, please send the, the email to ctntut at unisa.ac.za so that they can give you give you access to to the Western Cape portal. Um, on the portal. All the the time slots are all the all the videos, all the recordings will be there, all the presentations as well. Um, so so if you need access to to the Western Cape portal, please please just um, in center center email please to ctntut at unisa.hc.za um, and then. Again, on the WhatsApp group, I will also share share um, the the recordings and the presentations afterwards. So again, please, if you have not joined the WhatsApp group, um, I'm just sharing the link again. Um, please, please join the WhatsApp group or send me a, a message on zero eight three. Seven nine oh eight three eight seven. Let me quickly just show you as well. So eight three seven nine oh eight three eight zero oh eight seven. Cool. Okay. So tonight, basically, going to look at a compound interest. Um, we'll focus on some some basic concepts around it. Um, and then the application. So we will go into a few examples um, so that we can can really see what all the different things that they that they can ask you. Then I think the next next two weeks after tonight, it's long weekend time. So so we will not have have classes for next Friday or the Friday afterwards, which is Good Friday. Um, so we will then continue on on the 5th of April again. So just be I will also share it in the chat and on the WhatsApp groups um, so that our next class will only be after of the Easter. OK, so compound interest, so. Things that that we will need to need to know about compound interest. Um, we we'll look at the definition. We look at what is meant by compounded amount. 
Um, we will look at what present value is. We will look at what future value is. We will look at, and again, something that you will definitely get um, if in the exam, but probably also in your in your assignments is that you need to change a nominal rate to an an effective rate. Um, so so we will look at that. Then we will also look at odd periods. So what is meant nearly by odd periods is that for a period you will um, likely be looking at a simple interest calculation and then for another period you will be looking at a compound interest calculation but again like most of of the things they will need to tell you that for a certain period you are working with um simple interest and for a certain period you are working with compounded interest. So they can't expect you to to know from um, just telling you. So they need to tell you exactly what period is simple interest and what period is is then your your compounded interest. But also we will look at um, a, a question around that. Then what you will also what we will definitely definitely look at is um, fractional compounding and continuous compounding so so questions around that um, and then also we will just look at equation of of value and comparison dates whenever they, they might be talking about that fact as well. So just before we continue, unfortunately, one more link <laughs> um, is attendance register and then way at the end, I will also also include uh, evaluation form as well. OK. So let's Let's go into more of the, the detail. Um, so let's go into what what is compound interest. Um, so so the easiest way to look at compound interest is that the difference between compound interest and simple interest is that with compound interest you get interest on interest. So if we nearly go back to to simple interest we would have had a formula like this and let's say that is interest rate and t was time so that would have been our our formula so Whatever we would have put in, we will, depending on the time, we will get interest on it. Okay, but for for compound interest, the the basic formula change a bit. So, and the big change is just that the T now stands outside of a bracket. Okay, so that means that for every time that you get interest for the next period, you will earn interest on interest. And that is basically basically the difference between simple interest and compound interest. So if you look at, at compound interest, and I've just shown the, the simple formula, but again, if you, Google compound interest, you will probably get more that they talk about the amount um, than the future value or is. So, so just when you Google the, the term, 
Um, when you look at at maybe videos on on YouTube, most likely all the references is going to be called A instead of S, like in our in our study guide. But it still refers to the same thing. It is the amount at the end of that period. So then you will have a, a principal value that you would start off with. So they will normally say that um, you invested 10,000 rand at the beginning of a period, work out what the future value will be or work out what the amount will be at the end of the period. So, and then the, the big difference between the the simple formula that I just showed and and with this one is here they bring into factor what the the time period nearly per year is. So normally we will say it is it is R, but if it is monthly it is R divided by 12. It, if it is quarterly, it will be R divided by four, so your interest divided by four. And if it is compounded every half year, it will be R divided by two. Worst case nearly is that we get that we talk about yearly, um, but then again, they need to tell you it is, the year is 300 and, well, let's rephrase. If I don't, don't tell you how many days in the year, then it is 365. Okay, so again, if they don't tell us, then we will need to, need to assume it is 365. Okay, let's, let me just look at one other thing that um, quickly my screen is just stuck. Just want to, can you guys still still see the screen? Yes. Okay, cool. Okay, great. So let's, so, and then where it also then is, is doing something else. So with the interest rate, it is divided by two or 12 or four or three, six, five. Then it also has a direct impact on with what we, we time. So if I say it is twice a year for four years, then it will be twice a year for a period of four years which will give us then eight periods that we that we need to work with. Okay, so so it has an impact on on your interest rate that you will divide by that that number, but it also has a direct impact on on the time in in the years that that you will have to have to look at. Again, in all of this they will give you the information that is needed. So, so they might um, give it to you in words or they might give it to you in numbers. Again, it's a way to nearly catch you out, unfortunately, because Again, my brain is focused on I'm always looking for the numbers. And it might be that that they've written, so they won't give a 
interest rate to you in in words. So the interest rate component will always be in numbers, but but the time period they might put into into words instead of numbers. And sometimes one reads over it because you are so so fixing on looking at at ways for numbers that you need. So just be careful. Uh, and it, there might even be uh, an example of that when we look at it, but just be careful specifically when when we're working with with this um, and other questions in in DSC that sometimes they they give you the the numbers in words. So so just just be careful about that. Okay. I am sharing all of the slides on on the the WhatsApp group as well. So so I think it's also important that that you have this um, for for certain things. So nominal and effective rates. So we have it in the textbook, but yes, also a very, very nice one. So if I give you effective rate, I'm going to copy this formula into one of the next in, when we get to the to the actual examples, because this is a very nice formula to look at. Um, so we will be able to do this with a formula. Let me quickly see if I can. I will, I will quickly recent the recent the WhatsApp group link. Um, then I'm also I know there's people struggling to come into this session. I just quickly want to see if I can paste the link of a session. So just give me a minute or two. I just want to see if I can actually get to the link of of a session and share it quickly in our in our WhatsApp group for guys that are struggling to to get in. Um, don't know why there's problems with the uh, with the link. So hopefully people will be able to join with a link that I'm now now sent. It might also be um, and guys listening to the recording afterwards um, with all the Internet issues currently and the Microsoft issues, it might be that there's still certain of the uh, the teams that is not available. Um, so it might still be that there is issues in certain certain areas with certain things. OK, so. If they. Nearly asking you anything around the. The definition or anything like that, so they can nearly ask you to or the things that you need to nearly know about nominal and effective is basically if I give you effective rate, how to work out the nominal, but also the other way around. So if they um, give you a nominal, how to work out an effective rate, what they might also ask you, and this is where this last one comes in, is they might ask you uh, or give you a nominal rate of quarterly and you need to put that quarterly rate into a monthly rate or it might be that they give you a monthly rate and you need to put it in a yearly rate so so nearly the three things in in the nominal infective rate space is. Need to know how to 
to change from effective to nominal. Um, we can use the calculator for, for that as well. Then if a period of, of a nominal changes, how to use that. And then another one that we might have in one of the examples as well is where we might be um, changing it from an effective or nominal rate to a compounding period as well. Um, I think there is something like that in, in one of the examples. Okay, so that is nominal and effect, effective rate. Then the odd period calculation. So I first thought, let's go through all the, all the theory, all the definitions, and then, then we will go into some of the examples. So in the, the odd period, basically, I see there my, definitely my one screen has frozen. So let's hopefully, I know I've also got, got issues on my side with, with this. Um, ah, this is a bit frustrating. Okay. Hopefully it is now I can see the chat up to date as well. OK, so odd period, what will happen is that. There might be a. And we've done some of the odd period loss last week as well. So let's say there might be something like a 13 of April. To. A 50 April. I think there's 50 days in April um, and they say you need to work that with a simple interest. They will give you a simple interest rate, so um, they need to give that to you. And then they say, well, the rest, we work with a compound interest. And they also need to give you the compound interest until we end. OK, so so what? What that means is that they can say use simple interest for the for for the odd period, use the same interest rate, but compound it for the rest. So they can still use the, the same interest rate, but you might use it use it differently. Um, I have in in the examples, I definitely have one of these because they love to ask it. Um, so they would rather ask the odd period with the compounding than just the odd period in your in your simple interest um, that we did last week. Also to the guys that are joining the WhatsApp group for the first time, I will resend previous session and for previous presentation as well. And so don't worry about that. I will I will resend that for you. OK. Continuous compounding again, something that they love to ask. Um, so. We will get get something like this in definitely your assignments and and in in your exam again. As you can see, they love on all these things on 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 YouTube and Google. Um, they love to use a just remember in all of our study guides, the a is is nearly replaced with an s, which is your your final amount. Um, and then in your continuous compounding, how it is then structured is. We've got e to the power of rt, um, where r again is rate of interest, t is time. So if there is um, again monthly or quarterly, we will we will bring that into that that spectrum. Um, 
mostly not, but but if it is, we we will look at it. Um, and then again, your P will be your your initial initial payment. I will sometime during the next two weeks that we don't have sessions. I will put together a, a formula page for you guys so that that you have most of these formulas that we don't need to um, every time look and and search for it because we will you will get in the exam a question with this you will get a question with nominal and effective you will get a question on on compound interest okay so it's not about nearly um not not looking at it or don't need to you you will get these these questions okay let me then um, we we're gonna look at at these ones first then we'll, there will be another another set of questions but all the the memos are in here as well so i just quickly want to to go and fetch my my calculator um then i will show you how to how to do it on the calculator also going to show you some of it um how, how we do it in in excel so that you can also see that there is some of these formulas that is that's built into excel um, so just give me a minute i just want to go and oh so so that e all that that so that is just that is nothing to do with anything else that you need to know what it stands for or why it is in there the e in mathematics is is a constant number of 2,7183 and it it goes continuous but also on your calculator there will be a button e um, and that is the what we will use so so e is just a mathematical constant um how they got to it we're not going to go into that detail but what is important about this is that when we get to let's say we had the interest rate of zero comma one two over three years that we will need to on on a calculator and again dependent on which calculator you guys are using um, we will need to work out what that is in brackets first which is zero comma three six and then we will need to say e to the power of zero comma three six so where it sometimes becomes um, very important is depending on your calculator how that order is to put that information into your calculator um, so so that is very important so the order nearly becomes more important than than anything else and that is sometimes where this then might go wrong is if the order of your calculation goes wrong okay let me quickly fetch my calculator and then we can can look at the questions but i'm already just putting it up so that you can also look at it and start start putting in some of your responses in the chat Okay, right. Okay, so look at the first one. Um, question three. An amount of a thousand was accumulated to one thousand five hundred 
after two and a half years, calculate the interest rate per year if interest is compounded monthly. Okay, so that is, looks like a straightforward, we're gonna use our, our compound interest um, formula. So we have S is equal to P, Okay, so let's just remember, for now I'm gonna put in in there so that we can just check that we have covered covered it. Is is just give me a thumbs up if that is what what you would have done as well. Um, if not um give me like what other reaction could we get uh the surprised the surprised <laughs> face but thumbs up if you are getting the same um or you can put in the chat thumbs down if that is not how you would have started it then they give us more information so they tell us an amount of a thousand so we basically have started with a thousand we have 1500 at the end of the period then they tell us we need to calculate the interest rate okay so we don't know that yet but they tell us it is compounded monthly. So we are gonna divide by 12. Then they tell us it was calculated for two and a half years. 2.5 and just remember again, compounded monthly, so we will need to times by 12. Okay, so what I would do now, we will also do it on on the HP. So, um, so don't don't worry about that. So then, to get rid of a thousand, we will need to divide on both sides with a thousand. So we will then have a thousand on this side. So that will disappear. Then if you look at that 1,500 divided by 1,000 will be 1.5. And then let's just see what happens on this side. So I still need to, the R divided by 12, that I still need to keep in brackets. But let's see what is two and a half times 12 um, is 50. So to nearly get rid of the, the 50, I need to say I'm going to take on both sides the power of 1 over 50. Okay, so that will cancel out and we will then sit on your right hand side with one plus r divided by 12. But then we need to do the same on this side and say 1.5 to the power of one over 50. Okay, so that is just, and we're starting off with the most difficult one is to calculate R. Um, so if we then say 1.5 to the power of 1 divided by 50, we will get on your left hand side 1.5. 
0.0136, which we then will say minus one, because we want to get rid of that one on both sides, and that is equal to R over 12. So 1.0136 minus one is equal to zero sorry, comma sir. yes i'm not getting that one comma zero one three six okay so so what you you not getting that number yes so is it one point five times one divide by okay so one let's quickly let me quickly and that is where so it is one point five to the power of one over thirty. Okay, so there will be on do you have a HP calculator or do you have a sharp or cash show? I have I have a sharp financial calculator. Okay, so there will be on one of the buttons there will be something like a Y to the power of X. So yes. so the the Y will be the 1.5 and the X will be one divided by 30. Okay, so thank you. So if you do that, quickly check if you do get the, the numbers that I referred to. Okay, I'll check now. And did the other people also get the one comma oh one three six? Okay, cool. Okay, so let's just do that. Okay, so zero comma zero one three six. So now we need to get rid of that that 12 so we will multiply on both sides with 12 because if we then say 12 at the top we can then say 12 divided by 12. so a lot of mathematics in in this in this component of the work um, so 12 times that will give us R, which I then get as 0, 0,1633, which you will then need to multiply by 100 to get a percentage of 16.33. We created.
Uh, sorry about this, guys. I am going to be online now. And let's try this again. OK. Can you see my screen again? Yes, we can see. OK, perfect. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. OK, so. What you will also find in. In the solutions is. Yeah, you will see everything that it, it is small print, but when I share it, um, you will be able to to see it and and work through the solution again. So you will be able to do that. OK, so. Also, I just quickly wanted. To show this one. What you can also do on. On your calculator, so. So what I would have done in this instance is. You have a present value. Of a thousand. You have a, f a future value. Of a thousand five hundred. You need to work it out. They tell you that it is 12. Times per year, so you can have a 12 P per year. In there. You have a 2.5 N. That will be also then the 50 periods. And then if you ask it for the interest rate, it should give you also the the 16.33. Point, point so let's, I'm going to quickly just do it on my side because um, that is how it should work. Okay, so on my HP, I get the, you know, the 16 comma 3287, depending on how many decimals, and then it will be, you can round it off to 16.33. Point, point three three. So I've shared the formula that if you, if you want to use the formula, but for compound interest, just as well, you can use your or calculator. OK, so. Also, let's quickly. Just for this one. I just want to quickly share with you. Excel so that if you guys. Ever want to want to use it, so. We've got the, the present value, I'm going to make it a bit bigger now so that that we can see it a bit better but I just want to quickly put in all the all the variables that we're going to use and for this one we are looking for for that answer okay so let me it doesn't need to be that big. Okay, so we've got 
present value, got future value, got the period, or over times per year, we've got the n. So just want to then have how many periods there will be. So that will be the 12. Times that. Okay, so we want to work out interest rate. So let's just quickly see. Just quickly see if we look at what do they call it? Okay. I call it right in here. Okay, so V is the right function. So let's quickly look at what is in the right function. Your total number of periods. So there's total number of periods. Payment, there wasn't a payment, so we're not doing anything on a monthly basis. So that's zero. Your present value was that. Your future value was that. And let's see, quickly see why this is different. It's supposed to work, so let's quickly just check. That is 50. EMT is for payment margins month. There isn't anything. And that's all right. Just want to check if a mistake is in that. Yeah. Okay. So let me quickly show you what happened. So also for if you want to use use Excel. Um, so what Excel does is it can't it can't see that it is what the interest rate periods or if it is yearly or if it's monthly or anything like that so it asks you to work with an with a period but then that is actually the interest rate per month so you still need to multiply it by by 12 to get your your yearly interest rate Okay, so, so what is important is that, so if we change, and I will share the spreadsheet with you guys as well. So if we change that to quarterly, so that it is four periods, that will automatically then say four times 2.5 is your 10 periods, and that will automatically update then your interest rate because then it will be multiplied by four and not by by 12. But for this instance, um, so I am going to share the spreadsheet with you guys as well um, so that you you can use it. Um, again, I love Excel because I don't need to spend a lot on a financial calculator but i don't know if you guys are always allowed to to use excel in in the method how they uh, monitor you so it will it will be nice if you guys can share maybe the lecturer's email address or even ask the lecturer in an email what 
if Excel is is allowed or not, um, because it does it does help a lot if if you can can use Excel, um, because again, I know it is when you when you have if you have a laptop and those kind of things, Excel is normally loaded onto it. Not everybody has the financial means to now suddenly buy a financial calculator just for one one subject nearly. OK, so the next question, let's let's look at it. Let's see how we will approach it. Um, so here they say this guy invests 12,000 at an interest rate of 10.5 per year, compounded monthly. So there again, um, the monthly comes in after four years and three months. Um, he will withdraw 15,000 and invest it at 12% interest per year, compounded quarterly. What is the total accumulated amount of both accounts of the six years? Okay, let's first. We talked about timelines last last week, so let's look. He invest twelve thousand. So that that is the full six years. Um, after four years and three months. So let's just check four years is how many months? It's 48 plus the three. So after, after 51 months, he withdraws 50,000. So whatever that amount is at that point, so we will have a present value here. We will have a future value here. And then you will withdraw 15,000. That you will invest for the rest of that period. At 12% interest. Per quarter. Okay, so that's also where where the difference comes in. Okay, so so let's just say per per Q. Okay, so we first need to work out what is that future value going to be at at fifty one months. So we can say present value is equal to the minus 12,000. Remember, in our calculators, they always want one of the values for present or the future value to be negative. Um, then we get, again, the times per year is 12. Our interest rate for the first period is 10 and a half. And then what is our future? Sorry, not future, right? Future value. And so this, this we can work out with, with a calculator. So, and there was a period, sorry. N was, okay, four years and three months. So let's say three over 12, which was then in actual fact, 51 periods. OK, so let's see what what the future value is. So it's 12,000 
present value. It is again 12 times per year at the interest rate of 10.5. We have the period as Four point, what is it? Two five probably. Okay, and when your future value, what I get is eighteen seven one two comma nine five. I hope you guys get the same. I'm just going to check. Okay, so it's a bit different. So why is it okay? Sorry, there it is. 18712,95. So we've got the same for that that first period. So the future value at this point is 18712.95. Okay, so then we say we take 15,000 of that. So if we take 15,000 of that, what is left in this final period is 3712.95. Okay, so that will now be our new present value starting, starting year that we will need to use the same the same information so the only thing that will change is our present value will now be 3712.95 we will still use 12 so we're not working with a 15 yet um, year the period is not four and three twelves, so it is nearly what is left, so it will be one comma seven five, which will give us actually twenty one period, so it will be the other part of the six years, so it's one comma seven five, and that will be. 21 months. Hey, we'll still use, because we're still using with the original, still using the 10,5, and then we will get for well, that top one a new future value. Okay, so that, that will be. So let's quickly do that. 3712, or you could have used the previous um, number just. So let's do, do that as a present value. Again, 12 times per year. Now it is 1,75 years. So that is 21 periods. We still look at 10.5 interest rate. So our future value for that um, will then be four four five eight point three four. Okay, so only now we've only worked with a with a twelve thousand. We worked it out over that fifty one periods. We've got that. 18,000, which when they said we should take 15 away from it. So when we took 15 away from it, there was 3712 left. Um, but that is still, that 3712 is still invested in that same way. Um, so it's still invested for the rest of the six years. So that is still invested for 21 periods. It's still invested for, for at 10.5% interest. So for that 12,000 after taking away the 15,000, for that 
rupees, our future value would be 4,458. And you guys will be able to, to see that in, in the, in my explanation as well. Okay, so um, why I did that first and not worked with a 15? First is because everything was stored in my calculator. So then it is a bit easier that we don't get confused between changing things again. Um, so now I know the, the part that I've worked with 10.5% interest, the part that I've worked with monthly, it's done now. So now one can rather look at, at the 15 on its own. Um, and at the end, we will just then add the two numbers together. Um, so 15 on its own. So that will be the other one piece that we need to. So 15 will be a present value. They tell us it's also the rest of the six years. Um, so again, we work with with n that is equal to one comma seven five. But here, what is important is the periods per year has now changed. Okay, so now we're working quarterly. So now it becomes four. Um, because we've changed from compounded monthly to compounded quarterly. And also what has changed is our interest rate. So our interest rate has changed to, to 12%. Okay, so a few things have changed. So when we now work with a calculator, also remember that that we have suddenly suddenly changed a few things. So present value now is the the fifteen thousand negative present value. The number of years is one point seven five. Um, we do it now four times per year and not as usual the twelve times. Uh, and then the interest rate is 12%. So our future value that I'm getting, and this seems odd, this is not, can't be right, 2407. So I just need to check what did I now suddenly do wrong because it's definitely not not that so let me just quickly check in my calculation what did i do wrong Fifteen thousand present value okay no. okay and i'm this I've picked up something on my calculator. It made it instead of eight periods that it is, it made it 16. I don't know why that happened. And let me just make 100% sure. Okay, so it's 's something not right on my calculator let's quickly one comma seven five times four one point seven five times four okay it's seven sorry it's not my calculator is my brain that is not calculating it correctly oh yes two times Four would have been eight. Okay, so one point seven five was was the year. Now let's redo it. 
15,000 four times a year. Okay, now it picks it up as seven half percent interest. So uh, we then go future value. Perfect. We get eighteen four four eight comma one one. Okay, so and that is what what we've got. So again, easier with a calculator, but you will see I'm making some extra calculations so that when I now suddenly got 24 and I went back in was calculated as 16. So in in there somewhere I made a mistake, but I could pick it up because I knew it should not be 16. Um, it my period should be seven. Um, so somewhere I made a a, a a mistake with my calculator, but then I could see where I made it and nearly rectify it. You could also like they did use the formula. Um, no problem in that. What we can also do is we can use Excel. So again, let's nearly copy that that over to there um, and let's just make it a bit bit smaller so we had minus 12,000 we needed to work out the present value so that one is now a oh, future value so that one is for one that we will we will work out we knew it was 12 months. Um, they told us that it was for four years. And three months. So that we could work out. Um, and when your peer. when your period was was 51 um, they told us that that the regional interest rate was 10.5 so let's look at how to calculate the future value so we've got the rate we've got the periods There wasn't any monthly. We've got a present value. And then the only thing that we need to add with this one. Again, Excel is not. Not clever enough to. To know that. It is. Quarterly uh, or sorry, yearly or monthly, so. It used that 10.5% as a monthly um, so every time we need to multiply that interest rate still with the period of the numbers per year so excel is unfortunately not not clever enough in in realizing that but but look at if you put in the things you get exactly the same answer. Um, so, so there is at least a function for you to to work out um, future values, present values, interest rate. But the big thing around Excel 
is you will unfortunately need to to nearly rewrite the interest rate because it will use that interest rate as your 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 period so if you said we got it as 10.5 per year uh, monthly so they would use it in this instance as every month you get 10.5 percent and that is not not the real interest it is only 0.88 percent that you get on a monthly basis so the big thing with excel that you don't need to worry in your financial calculators is you can put in that 10.5 percent and you don't need to divide by 12 or divide by 4 where you will need to make that calculation or in the formula we will need to make that calculation so let let's quickly now that we are on it um, let's quickly look at the, the 15,000 one um, so the 15,000 was now suddenly quarterly it was one and then it was nine okay so quarterly 1.75 years was left so we knew it was seven periods so now because i've corrected the formula you will now automatically see that let's sorry so let's see what it did it did 15 percent um but that interest was different it should be 12 percent and there you will see that then we get the same answer so for that 15,000 that we invested for 1.75 years or seven periods quarterly um, the interest or the future value then is 18448.11 so exactly exactly the same as what your financial calculator so i will share this spreadsheet with you as well um, so that that you can you can work with that so let me rather do this put that interest rate there and let's bring you at least have it set up that it is right for you um, so that was let's just quickly check was 12 percent so that when you guys need to use it you can just change that um, so again this one was 12.5 percent so it is that divided by Ten point five. <laughs> okay. Cool. Okay. So there now you can um, you can see, and we can even if we need to hide that, but that's fine. Um, so whatever you need to do, you can then play around with this for your future values. If you need to work out the present value, use the same. The only thing that will change is that we will. Instead of a present value, we will put in a formula for that and we will be given future value. OK, but I will share the spreadsheet on on the WhatsApp group as well. So. For again, for the guys that might have joined. A bit later in the session. The WhatsApp group. Link. I'm quickly pasting again. Also, just quickly putting in the um, attendance register. So there is a forms one. Also, just 
that's on the link. Okay, so we've done one where we needed to work out interest. We've done now one that we've gotten nearly everything. We need to work out um, future value. A part of that future value then is taken away, reinvested, um, and we need to then change a bit of the information. Okay, so let's quickly duplicate the slide so that we can get to question five. Okay, so now you will see in question five that now we're working with the question around moving from effective um, or let's read it correct again. The investment company invades its fund at the interest rate of 12% per year compounded monthly. What is the effective interest rate that the company and so this 12% is a nominal rate, and we will need to, to turn the nominal rate into an effective rate. So we can use this formula. So let's quickly copy that in. Where are we now? Okay. Let's copy that in. Let's crop that. Let's make it smaller. I need that. It's so big. OK, so. We've got the nominal. And we will need to change it to to effective. OK, so let's quickly. See if we can do that. So, how the formula looks like one plus. So I'm just going to say the effective um, is one plus the nominal. So that is for zero comma twelve. N is monthly. So let's just. Remember to do that. So let, let's work out this first. So 0 0.12 divided by 12 is 0 0.01. So here we have 1.01 .01 to the power of 12, which will be, oh, let me quickly do that again, 1.01. .01. So I get that as one comma one two six eight. So one plus EFF is that. So I will need to get rid of that one. So I need to, to subtract on both sides. So the effective rate is going to be that minus one. So we're sitting with. 0, 0,1268. And that we will need to then multiply by 100 to get the interest rate, which will then be 12,68%. Okay, and let's just quickly see on our. 12,68, and there's also the, the formula in that they've also used. You can also try your calculator. Um, so, ooh, let me quickly. So, on my HP, there is a nominal percentage and uh, effective percentage. It's in the, the top row. Um, Remember when you do this on your calculator. In the previous question, we work with quarterly. Now we need to go back to monthly. So remember just to change your times per year back 
to 12. Otherwise, you're going to get the effective rate that is compounded quarterly instead of compounded um, monthly. And unfortunately, what they do is they will give you in the exam, one of your options will be if you didn't change your settings on your calculator. Okay, so that is unfortunate, but that is what, what they do do in, in, in your, you will even see it in your assignments as well and in your in your um, exam. So we next chapter, we will also look at annuities where we will talk about annuities at the end of a month, annuities at the beginning of a month, where you bring in that function of begin at on your calculator. Again, what I have seen a lot of time is you use that begin function. When you start the next question, you haven't changed your settings of a calculator. You do everything correctly, but one of the options will be the one that is with a begin function, which then will be wrong because you needed to change it again back to the original way. So please be just very careful when you use the calculator that when they change it from compounded quarterly to monthly, that you also change your settings on on your um, on your financial calculator. Okay, so for all three of those, I have included the the memo part of it as well. Um, so let's look at at two more, or actually. I just want to see, yes, two more. So, so both of them. Um, so, and let me just make a duplicate of that. And then we can crop it so that we can just focus on the question six for now. And in the other one, we will look at Question seven, okay. So question six. So here you will now see that that we're using two, two periods, but they say a few things in there. So on free January, Grandad Stain deposited two and a half thousand into a savings account for his grandchild who was born on 26 July of the previous year. A lot of information. Um, they could have just said he deposited two and a half thousand on on free January. So interest is credited at eighteen comma cent per eighteen point seven five per cent per year on the first day of every month. How much money does his grandchild receive on his first birthday? If simple interest is used for odd periods and compound interest for the rest of the term. Okay, so on free January, he deposited. So we will need to, to see from free January till 31 January how many how many days that is and for that we will use simple interest then from one feb to which month is it born july so so from one Feb to and I think June has 30 days. 
so that is in months. So that will be compound. And then from one July to 20, so what is it, 25 or 26? What would you guys say? I would nearly want to go with 25 July. So let's quickly just see. Okay, so on 26. So why do they say 26? Uh, okay, it includes that day. Sorry, its birthday is not 25. It's up until 26 because it is up until the, that day invested. So that is taking it back to two days again. So what you will need to do is in this instance, work out simple. So you will start off with two and a half thousand. That was invested. Okay, where's my, my table? Let's quickly see what I get. So on 31, it's what is it? Probably 28 days, but from 31 to 3 is 28 days. divided by 365 times what the interest was. Okay, so that is, that's your simple interest. So out of that, you will get now the new um, answer that you will then need to multiply because that will now be your start for the next one. Remember then, so let's quickly, sorry. So, so let's say that answer now is, is S1, let's rather use that. So you've now got an answer at S1. So now that is your new, present value. So that now we will need to work out on how many months. So Feb, March, April, May, June. So that is five months. Sorry. I got it wrong. This is the interest rate. So it is one eight seven five. Oh, it is now very small divided by twelve. Okay. So if you also look at the answer, so how was it? Why did I was it fifty two? And not 51. On 3 January, deposited into a savings account for his grandchild, who was born on 26 July. Interest is credited at 18.75% per year on the first day of every month. Okay, so that is that is why it's not on the end of a month. It is on one Feb. Sure. Okay, so that I have misread totally. So then that will give you 29 days then it will be from 
2 Feb to 1 July. So that is still six months. But then that will be from 2 July to 26 to July. So that will then be 24 days. So it might have been that you get very slight differences. No, but now that so here, here's something not right. So let me go. Let me just check this again for you because now I'm not. This does not seem right. The last one needs to be B24 and not 25. So let me just. I am going to recheck this for you. Um, but that is definitely not. That is definitely 24 days. So I will just check why that was was wrong. But so after you've done that five months, you will get another value. So that now will be the one that you will in the end now need to multiply again with a simple interest. So they've done with an odd day uh, simple interest, compound interest, and then simple interest again. Normally what they will do is in the exam, you will only get those two. They will not add another day or another period. They will normally only give you one simple and one compound. Um, in your assignments, again, it might be different, um, but but in your your exams, they normally want they normally do simple and one compound. They might have it that you do your compound first and then your simple, um, so they can play around with that. So. I need to just make 100% sure for you guys about these these days um, because again if we look at when interest so I will just need to check that again so because our that states to me first day of every month so that one still needs to be 28 unless you take in the free as well as the first day of the month. Um, so again, with how they put this for me is that, and that again, English higher grade maybe compared to, so we, we would normally and that is probably it. So let me quickly. So that first day refers to then that as being the first day. So actually, um, up until the second, you don't count. So from 3 January, you count. And then you will. So 3 January up until the 31st, then you will get 29 days. When we subtract 31 and 3, we normally say that day 3 is not included, but day 31 is included. Um, so I must probably read into this that the first day is also when you start this investment, it is on that first day of the third, and that's why it's 29. And that is why. This is when again probably 25 because on that first day it is so again I don't like it when they do this because I now needed to assume that it is also included where I would have just assumed it from from the month one. So I really don't like this 
this type of questions. OK, but basically what it comes down to simple interest rate first, compound interest rate second, then again the third one will be again a, a simple interest rate. OK. The one that they, and that is where we will look at com continuous compounding as well, is they love to ask this. Um, and we will look at one of it, but there is again for you all the all the options is in here. Okay, so let's just quickly check. We now need to look at Joseph would like to buy a lawnmower. He has three options when it comes to borrowing. Okay, so let's look at all three of them. Um, the 3750, so he needs to make basically a choice. He's going to borrow the 3750. He can borrow it against 17.5%. He can borrow it against 16% and again against 16%. Compounded semi-annually, so that is twice a year. Compounded quarterly, so that's four times a year. Compounded monthly, that is 12 times a year. Continuous compounding. Okay, so we had it in that formula that we talked about the E. So let's quickly just go to that. So A is equal to, and let me copy that picture just over so that we have it. Let's just take that snippet. And we can just make that bigger. OK, so he has three options when it comes to borrowing the 3750. OK, so we've got the 3750. We will need to make nearly sure which of the P's are the lowest. So which of the ones that you will put in um, the least? So let's just, and let me just show you in here. So what we will need to work out, and that now becomes a bit different and I just quickly want to see if we have this in our study unit because we now need to change that that E option into a linen. I don't know. I just want to quickly check. Yes, it is in, in your study guide where they put out that that whole process. Um, so what I'm going to do is also just quickly copy this in. I will quickly show you guys how to, are we going to move from a one to the other one? So that you can just see that. Um, Okay, so in this formula, we have that you will be given when we look just at the continuous compounding. We will normally need to work out over A, over, over P. Um, they might ask us to work out the rates. Um, so that is how, how we will, will first need to look at it. So if you look at this, 
by now tell us that is what he is borrowing me. So we know that that he is borrowing 3,750. OK. What they want to find out for us, or what we need to find out, sorry, is to find out which of these interest rates that we are going to use um, is the best option for him to take. OK, so what that means is basically we will need to work out giving that information what is actually going to be um, the least amount of interest that he will pay. OK, so we can then look at it in in a few ways. So instead of using this formula because we don't have have all the information in this one we can then go and say but okay if you go through a few processes um, the way that we also can work out continuous compounding rate is by looking at the period that they give us and for other interest that they give us. So, so we can with that work out that com continuous compounding rate. So the continuous compounding rate will be slightly different for all three of them. OK, so let's quickly look at the information that they've given us. So I first wanted to go to use this but they did not give me the p okay so if i looked at that then i would have needed to work out the p for both of of all three of them and then i would have needed to to do more things and i don't have have all the information for that so that is why we are going to only use this function. Um, and again, it is in your in your study guide. It is in your textbook or study guide. Sorry, um, when I do the formula update, I will just put this in for you as well because I have now missed it in to put it into this session. OK, so. We now have that information. Exactly, so back to quickly that that 25. Um, so it is because. That one is included. You spot on. I was a bit more worried about about the the twenty nine um, because sorry that I'm jumping now between the questions um, because of how we would normally work it out is to say thirty one minus three. Okay, so I was more more worried about that how to get to the twenty nine. OK, so in year, so what do we have? We've got your your interest rate per year. So again, remember 17.5 changes to 0, 0,175. Semi-annually is twice a year. Okay, so that will be the first formula. The second formula will be quarterly. And the third one will 
be monthly. And so then we nearly calculate each of them. Um, so on your calculator, we will need to say, and again, you will have the, the LN function, which is also log function, so 0.175 divided by 2 gives me 0 0.0875, but if I add that to 1, I just, just quickly want to do that so that you can, the other ones, just also see what will be, how you will get in the bracket. So that will just be 0.175 divided by 4 plus 1, and this will be 0.175 divided by 12 plus 1. Okay, so that we will need to take the the log of that which on my side is 0 0.08388 so hopefully you will get that as well we multiply by 2 And then I will get 0, 0,1678. Okay, and that we can do for all of them. So 0, 0,1678 will be 17,68. For the one that is divided by 4, it is 15,69. And for one divided by 12, is 15,89. And then the one that is the lowest will be the one that we will choose as the option. I originally would have thought it is option two would be your best. I just thought that it's, and it's weird, but it's obviously because it's continuous compounding brings another dynamic into it because the equation is different from a, 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 con, a compound interest. But something that is, uh, sorry for this, I just assumed it's 17,5 straight through. And that's why those two changed. And that's where I now made the mistake. Okay, so if it is, yeah, Sorry about that. It just shows how easy it is to make this in the exam as well, even. Because those two are the same. OK, so it's because the rate is changing that that one is cheaper. OK, if it was purely the same percentage, and you can go and work it out for yourself if you put in this 0, 0,175 divided by 4 instead of the 1,16. We plus 1, we take the lin of that and we times by 4. We will get, and you guys can also just, just check for me we will get 0, 0,1713, okay, or 17,13% if we used for 1,75. So, again, I would have, and that's why if I looked at this in the exam, I would probably have made a mistake because the shorter your period, the best it is normally, but because there was an interest difference, um, it will be between those two then. Because again, the shorter it is, the better. So if your two interest rates are the same, the shorter, the better. So rather have the same interest over quarterly, then you will have the same interest 
monthly. Okay, because you will just pay more. Um, so that's why I originally thought it's obvious it should be the, the twice a year, but totally caught out by the numbers. Um, I and you guys would have now seen, I just jotted down 0 0.1 um seven five and it is that easy to make this mistake in your assignments and in the exam um so nearly learn out of my mistakes as well when when you think it goes too easy and you think you got it right just double double check that that you are doing it correctly um because just by that one thing that I now mislooked, I would have gotten totally a different different answer. OK, let me I'm just going to quickly share. Again, because we are done for the evening, I will share all of this. In the WhatsApp group, so again, just quickly. For the guys in the WhatsApp that hasn't joined the WhatsApp group, 083 so you can send me a whatsapp as well 0837908387 or click on the link then just for registration purposes there's a forms link and then the last one so is all that is just attendance and then if you like to do evaluation of the session there is also a link now for that as well okay so what's up group um let me stop the recording so that i can just say what i'm going to do so that 